Most Christian parents understand right now that there are a lot of things happening inside the culture that are affecting the church. There are so many parents concerned with what's happening in the schools, but we need to also be paying attention to what's going on in our homes. We have been recently been talking on the show about the statistics of the numbers of children leaving the church. A long time ago, my friend Ken Ham wrote a book called Already Gone, where he was saying that we're losing our young people out of our churches faster than we can bring them in. And it's true. 90% of today's Christian young people don't believe in absolute moral truth and even more more shocking, 50% of children's pastors believe that Jesus sinned on the earth. The question is, how did we get here? Well, my guest today is going to talk about this with me. Leanne Mancini is an adjunct professor and the founder of the nonprofit Raising Christian Kids, and she hosts the award-winning Raising Christian Kids podcast. She's the author of Raising Kids to Follow Christ and hopes that it will help every single one of you who are raising the next generation to love and follow Jesus. I'm happy to have her here. This is going to be a great conversation. You guys, stick around. I think you're going to be encouraged. Well, thank you guys for tuning in today. You guys have found me right here at my little corner of the internet. This is the Heidi St. John podcast, and I'm glad that you guys have joined me. You know how concerned I am with what's happening with today's young people. And in fact, we were talking about this in a podcast a couple of days ago, that almost every social ill that we can talk about at the show right now is literally targeting children. Transgenderism targets children. Uh, The LGBT movement is targeting children. What's happening at our southern border, targeting children. The drug epidemic, targeting children. It's almost as if the enemy of your soul is after your children. Well, my guest today knows all about this and she's here to talk to me about it. Leanne, my friend, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me, Heidi. I'm so happy to be here to talk to you and your audience. I'm glad that you're here too. Let's jump right into this because we've really reached an inflection point in the culture, certainly in the church. You know, my podcast is called Off the Bench. I've been trying to get people off the bench and onto the battlefield uh, to engage in what's happening around them now for probably 20, at least 20 years. And it seems to me that every time I talk to someone like you, instead of getting better, Things are getting worse. They're getting, uh, you know, we're watching pastors who claim to be pastors, right? We've got the progressive Christian church movement. We're watching uh, pastors denying the deity of Christ and obviously the sinless nature of Christ. All of these things, of course, go against the word of God, which they don't care about either because many of them don't believe in the authority of scripture, even though the apostle Paul drummed this into Timothy over and over and over again. I I know that you're seeing the same thing. It's why you wrote the book. How did we get to this point? Oh, you know, the target has always and will always be the children. Yep. Um, You know, Aristotle once said, give me a child for the first seven years and I'll have him for his life. Well, you know who else said that? Uh, Hitler. Mussolini, Hitler, (laughs) Stalin. They know that if you can grab the children early in life and you can transform their minds and their hearts to believe what is evil, what is wrong, that's how they're going to follow when they become adults. And I think this is what's happening, why we don't see many Christians in the four pillars of society, government, academia, the church, the media. Mm. And so, you know, the devil knows if he can have the children, he can hold the future. And that's what, exactly what's happening. Yeah, it is. And and for that reason, you know, I was just on a television show the other day and I think I bummed the host out a little bit because, you know, he was saying, you know, Christians need to be in politics if we can just if we can just, you know, get this one sphere of influence. And I was like, no, dude, that's actually not going to do it. You got it. That's like, you know, we see this big giant tree that has all these branches on it and the tree is evil. And we're over here hacking at the root or hacking at the limbs when we need to be hacking at the root. And the root is education. It's the spring. It's where all this stuff is coming. And God says in his word that parents are responsible for bringing their children up in the the ways of the Lord. And you've written Raising Kids to Follow Christ, and it really is an urgent read for Christian parents today. What is the main thrust of the book? Well, I was alarmed a few years ago when I was hearing the statistics that 40% of middle schoolers were walking away from their faith. And as the statistics you just repeated uh, at the beginning of the show here, it's much more alarming. It's even worse. Um, in fact, George, Bor- George 
George Barna, in his book, Raising Spiritual Champions, says we're at the precipice of irreversible destruction. Yeah. And so, you know, there's so many things we can do uh, that that is organic day by day uh, in the homes. You know, uh, parents, grandparents, ministry leaders, but especially grandparents and parents, you're your child's most most important uh, influencer in their life. And you mm-hmm. start when they're young um, because you want to build that foundation. The Their worldview starts around 15 months of age and it's solidified pretty much about 13 uh, years of age. And so you want to build that foundation. I say we're planting or we're preparing the soil from the womb mm-hmm. to age three. And I give a lot of examples of how we can do that. And then from four to seven, you're planting seeds into rich soil to grow deep roots to build that foundation. And then from eight to 13, you build upon that foundation. Uh, There's so much we can do. I'll give you a short example. A toddler, they're getting ready to take a nap. Instead of saying, take a nap, say, let's take a Sabbath's rest. Now, the toddler doesn't really know the true meaning of Sabbath, but you're building a vocabulary and a category in their mind of the word Sabbath. Later, when you explain, and they know it has something to do with rest, and later right. when you explain the true meaning, you're planting seeds in a rich soil. Yeah. Uh, you have an infant who's nursing or you're bottle feeding. You know, first they're screaming because they're hungry. Right. Then you put that bottle and you start hearing them coo. You know, I remember those days. They were oh, so man. Yes. And while they're cooing, you say, Jesus loves you. Jesus yeah. loves you, Joni. You're connecting her emotions being met with the name of Jesus. There is so much we can do, and uh, we just have to do it. You know, I say we have to be like Rosie Riveter, World yep, War II, yep. roll up them sleeves, yes. yes, get on the battlefield, do what we need to do. We can do it. We can yeah. turn this around and save our children. Yeah, we really can. And I think a lot of parents don't realize how precious these early years are, these formative years where we've got these impressionable little ones that God says in his word are on loan to us. There's a reason why the enemy is taking direct aim at children. And Christians historically have been the the group of people, the class of people that have championed children's rights, protecting the innocence of children, protecting children from predators and from harm. This is the heart of the our Father God, right? Who loves little children? He and Jesus said, "You know, let let the little children uh, come to me." But I'm thinking about you know what you just said about how early we should be teaching these principles, and I want to sort of drill down on that a little bit more because there are lots of people listening to this. Either they're my age and they've got grandchildren, like I know that I have impact in the lives of my grandchildren. And it matters, doesn't it, Leanne, what we say to them on the regular. When you meet a mom, and I'm hoping that there are pastors listening to this today too. When you meet a mom and you realize, okay, she doesn't understand how precious this is. And we can all relate. You know, I've been there. I raised seven children. I know there are days when you're just like, why am I doing this? No one's listening to me. It doesn't have, you know, it's, it's not making any difference for anything for any reason. But I want to encourage this mama to recognize how important her voice is and to the fathers who are listening to recognize, boy, you guys don't waste these formative years. How do we encourage? And some of the statistics that you gave me, and I think you should just keep spouting them because it's alarming. How do we encourage these parents? What is the best way to teach a parent the importance of making sure that we don't waste those formative years? It reminds me of the story my niece came over to visit me from Michigan, and she had two little babies, and she said, you know, Aunt Leanne, I'm having such a hard time. I want to go back to work. I miss the days I worked. I loved my job. Turns out this motherhood gig is pretty hard. Exactly. (laughs) It's just so daily. Yeah. It is, and I just miss those they're like free days now. She used to think it was work (laughs) until she had toddlers. Right. Uh, But (laughs) it's true. I said, you know, Beth, come with me. And I grabbed her hand and I took her to a a portrait of my children when they were little on the wall. And I pointed to them and I said, Beth, do you know where these little ones are? I Mm. miss them terribly. I'd give anything to spend one more day with them. I said, Beth, don't worry about the work. Don't worry about the dishes. Don't worry Mm -hmm. about the laundry. Don't worry about anything because there's nothing more important. God has chosen you for a time such as this to raise these little ones to become 
counterculture warriors. You know, it says in the Bible that children are arrows in our quiver. Well, what are those arrows used for? You put them in the bow and they're precisely made. They're perfectly made, okay? So they can aim well and you shoot the enemy. Our children are our future, our future to fight this evil, humanistic, uh, secular world that wants to destroy Christianity. And But we can do this organically in the home, day by day, every day, little bit by little bit, according to Deuteronomy you know, 6, 4 through 9, when you, when you rise up, when you walk along the path, when you lie down. And my book has hundreds of suggestions on how to do that. You know, most books, I read a lot of parenting books. I did a lot of research for this book. And a lot of books will tell you, well, here's what we need to do. But then they don't tell you, how do you do it? Mm. I think parents need that. They need help. Our churches, you know, our pastors, we're getting, we're getting bombarded on both ends from the devil. He yeah. wants the children and he wants the adults that are sitting in the pews. Well, he's I, getting them. Yeah, they're, they're just, it's not even um, prosperity preaching that I'm worried about. It's the preaching of God loves you, pray every day. Uh, let's hear about, uh, you know, uh, Saul and Paul. No, let's talk about sin, you know, and what the repercussions of sin, eternal hell, and what we need to do. We need meat for adults and for children. Yeah, it's really true. And, you know, you're talking about, you know, the command to parents in Deuteronomy that we're supposed to be teaching our children. And I want parents to think of it this way. The left in this nation has taken that command very, very seriously. And they are doing it when you rise up, when they walk along the road. You can't go through the checkout stand at Walmart and not be bombarded by this ideology, whether it's a sexual ideology or just a blatant secular ideology. You can't turn on the television. You can't get on social media and get away from this stuff because they're actually doing exactly what Deuteronomy 6 yeah. says that we should do when it comes to children. Wherever you are, when you rise up, when you lie down, when you walk across, uh, walk along the road, God says, instill godly values into these children. Children, because if we don't do that, then the enemy is going to hijack them. In the book, you mentioned a thought that scared you, you said, to your core. An image that Jonathan Edwards, the North American revivalist preacher from the 1700s, used to frighten parents. It's a very vivid example. Can you talk about that and what your reaction was to it? Yes. Uh, thank you, Heidi. When I was researching for my book, I came across uh, this quote or this statement Jonathan Edwards tried to frighten the parents in the 1700s to, to bring them back into the church. It was a revival. And he said, just imagine yourself in heaven sitting at God's banquet table, and you're looking around the table, and you're seeing all your family members or people you love or people you know or people you respect, but you don't see your children. Mm. For all eternity, you will never see your children again. Mm. And that just, it shook me to the core when I thought about it. You know, it, this is what it's all about. S trying to secure in our children's hearts the desire to be with God and with us for all eternity. Well, you have to change their hearts and their minds now because, listen, they'll either have a biblical worldview or they'll have man's worldview. There's only two worldviews. There's not a lot of religions. There's only two religions, man's and God's. And so that really did, that startled me. That just, no, I want my children in heaven with me. And I bet every mother and father listening to this podcast feels the same way. Yeah, there's no question. And I think uh, so much of what we're facing right now is just this overwhelm. It's the sense of overwhelm, right? We're overwhelmed with what's happening in our public libraries. You know, the, the library's disgusting places for children now. And parents need to be aware. You cannot be, there's just, unfortunately, there's just absolutely no time to rest now. And I think parents are feeling that, right? This just sense of like, well, you know, what? Forget it. I, I, I'm too. I'm too overwhelmed by this. There are a lot of parents who, even though Heidi St. John is like, get your children out of public school. <laughs> there are still lots of parents, Christian parents, even whose kids are in the public school and they're struggling with their kids, and they're being exposed to this wickedness. I don't know another way to say it. Right. Day in and day out. Do you have advice, encouragement for anyone whose children are still in the public school? Yes, I do. You have to double down at home. 
Yeah. Um, you have to prepare your children early. First, you need to know the Bible. You need to know God's word. If you're just lackadaisical and studying as God's, God's word, if you go what Ken Ham calls a Sunday school faith for your children, right, right. Yeah. it's just not going to work. Um, you need to model what you're teaching your children. You need to live out these biblical principles. And you need to look for opportunities um, to express God's love and the truth of God Every day, as you walk along the path, again, you rise, you rise up, you walk along the path, you lie down, and there's a lot of things you can do. So some some parents will say, "Well, you know, geez, I haven't done this early, and I'm worried now. I have a middle school or a teenager. Sit down with your teenager. Parents have to understand: children don't have rights really, except for food, clothing, shelter. They have privileges." So you sit down with your teenager and you simply say, look, I haven't been doing what I need to do. I want to apologize. We're going to start doing some things differently in the house. We're going to have a family mission statement or a contract between you and I, between parents and the kids to understand what we're expecting our family to do as a whole and have the teenagers become involved in deciding, uh, you know, what will be the consequences for disobedience. I'm telling you, if you take away their privileges, you'll see how fast that teenager will turn around and want to obey. And the most important thing is you want them to obey because you want them to do it in their heart. Mm -hmm. So you say to them, look, I'm sorry, but I'm responsible to God for how I raise you. I want to keep you safe and I love you. They can't argue with those three things. Mm -hmm. And role play, role play with little ones, role play with your teenagers, uh, prepare them for scenarios. There's just so much we can do and we can do it in a fun and loving way. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you know, you don't want your children to behave because they're like a trained dog. Behavior modification doesn't work. Nope, it doesn't. And you're, you're trying to get to the heart. And actually, yeah. that's what, that's what, that's what the Holy Spirit will help you to do. Yes. Yeah, There's so, so good. Your book is full of statistics. And I am like you, I think, a statistic junkie because it just sort of tells us, oh, yes. hey, you know, I have a I have a feeling about this, but my feeling may or may not be correct. The statistics don't lie. And I'm looking at some of the things that you have written here. And you're saying among children 13 to 14 years old, uh, 90 percent and I think I, I quoted this at the uh, onset of the show today, believe that there's no absolute moral truth. Well, that's everywhere, right? 84% don't believe they're born into sin and need of salvation. Less than 1% of early teens have a biblical worldview. And the prevailing worldview among 99% of young teens is this combination of different beliefs. Yes. And I'm wondering, how does a parent, I mean, honestly, boy, this just, it, it just eats at me because I just think, get your kids out of these schools, get them out of these schools. Like they're, we're literally making our kids swim through a cesspool. We're having them walk through Babylon to get a mediocre education. But the truth is, the truth is, Leanne, we could keep our kids home and miss this, couldn't we? Oh, absolutely. You know, these are our children. Those statistics are children from Christian homes. Yeah. So, you know, you are the parent. And you can sit down, like I said, and you, if you have to have your kid in a public school, if you have no other choice or you feel you have no other, no other choice, you have to double down at home and you have to make sure they understand even you're, I want you to go there and I want you just to pay attention to the academics, mm -hmm. to the ABCs, the one, two, threes, the history. I don't want you to pay attention to any of these, um, LGBTQ, XYZ, everything that they're throwing at our kids today, this woke mm -hmm. and all this stuff. And here's why. And you sit down and you talk to your kids and you explain to them. You don't wait for them to come home and say, hey, mom, I learned about this in school. What does this mean? Mm -hmm. You have to be proactive. Mm -hmm. You have to know what's going on, what the enemy's doing, what his ammunition is. And you need to prepare your children to have that, um, the armor. The, the and this is true whether your kids are homeschooled or not, you know, oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, you and I, I mean, I've been out on the homeschool circuit for a very long time and I could sit here and I'm sure you could too and talk uh, about stories that would just make people weep about parents who thought they were doing everything right. And, and sometimes, I mean, to, to be fair, sometimes we do do everything right and our children still. Mm -hmm. choose to walk away from the Lord. And this is the yeah. story of the prodigals, right? That, yes. that, but what we don't want 
is to look back at the time that God gave us to raise children with regret. And that is what I always tell parents, what you don't want later on in life, because Leanna, you and I are in the same season of life. And we've learned that there are seasons for, there's a season for sowing and a season for reaping. Uh, you and I very much now in a season of reaping what we have been sowing for the last, you know, 50 years of our lives. And boy, that time for sowing, it comes and goes really, really quickly. Mm -hmm. And so parents need to understand this, you know, just because you keep your kids home, you can, you know, protect them against, you know, a lot of the stuff that would come at them in the school system. But if you fail to teach them a biblical worldview. Why do we believe what we believe? The why is so important. Yes. We don't want our kids just to have this rote understanding or a rote memorization of biblical facts that we spew at them. Uh, my friend, Kurt Cameron is always telling me, listen, it's not it's not head to head transfer, it's heart to heart transfer. Mm -hmm. How is that different, Leanne? Talk to the parent who's like, uh, you know, sitting their kids down and, 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 and it's become like this um, instead of discipleship, it's become sort of a, you know, facts, we're throwing facts at you. We can miss the heart doing that, can't we? Yes. Well, you know, there's a lot of information that's thrown at us daily from everywhere, every aspect in our lives. But the only thing that transforms us is the information that gets into our hearts. Yeah. Okay. It becomes our heart's desire. So, you know, you have to take everything and take it captive, every thought, yeah. every word, and sit down with your child and talk to them about everything that's going on and prepare their hearts to, um, you know, apologetics. I have a whole chapter on apologetics. Have your child learn how to defend their faith because they believe, because they know it's the truth. Mm. And you can start doing that early. You know, um, I love the book, uh, Irwin, uh, I'm forgetting her last name, Rooted in Wonder is the book. It is a phenomenal book for parents uh, of young children to take them out into nature and to show them absolutes, the absolutes of nature, of God's nature, and start teaching them absolute truth. There, there's just so much we can do. Um, yeah. have, you know, if you're homeschooling your child, make sure the number one thing you're teaching them is God's truth. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's first before, and you can get hijacked sitting on your couch at home, right? Because oh, the yeah. pressure that you'll feel from the world, like got to get that math lesson in, got to do your spelling lesson, got to make sure that we have a great social studies unit that we're doing, and days go by, and months go by, and years go by, and you figure I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna spend time in the Word with my kids because, of course, we're Christians and we go to church, and you miss the opportunity. It's so preciously, and we are out of time for the regular show, but uh, Leanne's going to come back for a happy hour today, and we're going to continue talking about her book, Raising Kids to Follow Christ. Uh, this is a wonderful book. I was privileged to be able to write an endorsement for it, and we're going to come back for happy hour and take a little bit of a dive into some practical advice. I'm going to be asking Leanne what her biggest piece of advice is for parents and other caregivers as they start to help build the spiritual foundation for their children. This information, of course, can be found in her book, Raising Kids to Follow Christ. Leanne Mancini, it's just been a joy to have you. Where can people find you online? Well, thank you for having me. Uh, RaisingChristianKids.com. We have free resources that parents can download. We have a series tip from the experts where experts uh, give a 15-minute video uh, of how you can raise your kids to follow Christ and to stay connected with Christ. So important. Well, I'm excited. I'm, I'm thrilled for you to come back for happy hour or two and hang out with uh, some of my VIPers. And we're going to dig into a little bit more of this practical advice. Uh, I so appreciate you coming on. I believe, it, and it seems to me, and I'm seeing it more and more, God is raising up uh, men and women all across the world right now who are sounding the alarm, watchmen on the wall to say, hey, listen, this, this stuff's important. It's, in, it's important for civilization. It's certainly important for the cause of Christ. But I think we've reached an inflection point, and I know that your book is going to be a, a powerful tool in the hands of parents. Again, that book is Raising Kids to Follow Christ, Instilling a Lifelong Trust in God by my friend Leanne Mancini. I hope you guys will check it out. You guys want to follow me? I'll be out on the road this summer. My speaking season has just begun, and you can find out where I will be at HeidiStJohn.com forward slash events. If you have questions you would like to submit, go to HeidiStJohn.com forward slash Mailbox 
Monday and you will find a link there. We love to hear from you. Thank you for helping us reach 23.5 million downloads here at the show. We love our audience and what God is doing through you as you get off the bench and onto the battlefield. If you're subscribed to the show, stick around for happy hour. Leanne's going to come back and dish with me a little bit more. And everybody else, thank you so much for listening. And I'll see you back here again at the intersection of faith and culture. Mm -hmm.